All right, folks, indulge me if you will. Let's wind the clocks back to September of 2018. I'm fresh out of college in Boston, but I have not yet moved back home to LA. I've moved out of my apartment, so I'm staying at an Airbnb. And in this Airbnb is a PlayStation 4 with the game Overwatch. I had never played it. I didn't know that much about it other than the chick on the cover art made a small cameo in Ready Player One. But I thought I would see what all the fuss was about with this game. So I gave it a try and instantly I was hooked. And so the reason I'm making a video on this game now is because a sequel was announced a couple months ago. I don't know if it's coming out this year or next year. Sometimes game sequels are announced a few years in advance before they come out. Now normally I have a January tradition of making videos about movies I've seen that are getting sequels this year, but this year, 2020, there aren't really any movies that fall into that category for me. But Overwatch is getting a sequel that might come out this year. It's good enough for me. <laughs> Overwatch. So Overwatch is a video game that came out, I think it was 2016, and it's brought to us by Blizzard Entertainment, the same minds who brought us World of Warcraft. And what is Overwatch about? Well, it's actually kind of tough. It takes place in the future. Humans and machines, or Omnics as they're called in this universe, they live side by side. But then eventually the Omnics wage war on humankind, so there's a big war, you know, like Terminator. So who do we have to protect mankind against this threat? A team of people with special abilities. The team is called Overwatch. So now a few years have passed and the Overwatch program was actually shut down and all right, look, I could go on and on talking about the story of this game, or at least what I remember from it, because there's a lot of story in this game. Or not in the game itself, though. It's lore that's told in comic books and videos on YouTube. The way I can talk about Overwatch is that the story and the game itself are like two completely different things. And I'll talk about the game itself a little later, but right now I'm going to tell you why I love the game so much, what really drew me into its world. And that is... Well, the world. The world of Overwatch is so bright and colorful. I love the design of Overwatch. See, when you play the game, you go to different maps, and these maps are, you know, in different countries around the world. You have Hanamura in Japan, you have Hollywood in California, you have Dorado in Mexico, you have Eichenwald in Germany. So many different beautiful maps with music that absolutely reflects the culture that's represented there. But of course, it's not just the maps. The characters in Overwatch are so colorful, diverse, they all play differently. They each have different personalities that shine through. They each have their own backstories. That's what I really love about Overwatch, is that that every single character is so fleshed out. I feel like they could each have come from their own game, like Avengers style, where each of the characters have their own movies first and then they come together in the big team up. That's how I feel about the Overwatch characters. I feel like they could each have their own specific game series and then they come together in Overwatch. Right now in Overwatch, I think there are like 30 something odd characters. Of course, I'm not gonna talk about every single one of them that would make this like an hour long video. Not gonna do that. I am gonna touch on a few though. First and foremost, the girl on the cover art, Lena Oxton, codename Tracer. Hailing from the UK, she was a member of the Overwatch team who got caught up in like a time accident because she was like the first person to pilot this new ship but then something went wrong basically her deal is that she can warp time to her own means which is why she can like zip around really fast she can do that because she's warping her own timeline I just think that's really cool conceptually then you have Winston Winston is a cybernetically enhanced gorilla so yeah the game is kind of cartoonish well not kind of it's very cartoonish Winston in the story is the one that gets overwatch back together after they've been disbanded for a few years so he's a pretty important character in the story another important character Jack Morrison aka soldier 76 he was the leader of of Overwatch back in the day before they got disbanded. Or actually, it was him and Gabriel Reyes. They were co-leaders. When Overwatch got disbanded, Jack Morrison decided to stay a good guy and kind of do good deeds in the shadows. But Gabriel Reyes decided to turn turncoat and become an entity of death known as Reaper. Now, Reaper has become part of a terrorist organization called Talon, which now we have several characters in the game that are actually Talon characters, including one of my favorites, Widowmaker. Widowmaker, to me, has one of the best backstories of any character in the game. She used to be a French ballet dancer, Amelie Lacroix. Her husband was part of Overwatch. Then Talon kidnapped her and turned her into an emotionless assassin. So now that's what she is. Tragic as hell. Now I'm talking about these characters. I don't really play as them that much, but I just find their story so damn intriguing. Some of these characters have little story videos on YouTube. Overwatch has a YouTube channel and these cinematic short films are like 10 minutes long. I'll put a link to one in the description if you want to check it out because they're really cool. They're just little deep dives into what makes that character tick. Again, the diversity of all these characters. They're so individually unique. That really just drew me into the world of Overwatch. Now, as for the game itself, it might come as a bit of a shock when I say there's no story mode in Overwatch. Yeah, the story of the game is told through the YouTube videos and digital comics on their website and things like that. The game is an online PvP game, player versus player. It's two teams of six going at each other and trying to win. The main playing mode in Overwatch is called Quick Play. You just go online and then people join your group and then you fight another group and you play around. It's either, you know, capture the base or protect the payload. There's, you know, an object that is trying to move along a path. You need to protect this payload by getting close to it. It'll move when you're close to it, but the other team is trying to stop the payload. You need to get the payload to its destination while fighting off the other 
team which is trying to prevent the payload from getting to its destination. And it's a lot of fun. Now, like I said, all the characters are not just culturally diverse, but they all play differently. They have different weapons, different guns. You know, some of them don't even have guns. They have swords or giant hammers. And the way I see it, the character you play as, you know, the character who is your main is dependent on the kind of weapon you'd like to use in video games. You like to use shotguns? Great. Play as Reaper. You like bow and arrows? Play as Hanzo. You like to use a sniper rifle? Play as Widowmaker. Me? I like my rapid fire. Whenever I play Bioshock Infinite, I always stick with a machine gun. You know, just... The faster the better. So which character in Overwatch plays like that? Bastion. Bastion is my main. Don't hate me, okay? Bastion to me is just really easy to play as because he's literally a turret. He's a robot. Press the shift key, he will go into turret mode and do rapid fire. Unleash a barrage of bullets. I mean, just look at this. Look at that. <laughs> All I gotta do is sit on the payload and shoot at anyone on the opposing team who dares to come close. Of course, I don't always win the round. Playing online, some people are really good. And I don't dare play competitively. I just play for fun. And it is a lot of fun. I do have a second main, though. That would be Brigitte Lindholm. Her weapon is she has this, like, chain hammer kind of thing that she swings around left and right. She also has a shield she can use to protect herself. And she's a healer. When you're swinging left and right and you hit enemies, that activates her passive ability, which is she heals herself. Pretty good character. And she can throw armor at her teammates. Armor meaning extra extra health. Yeah, characters fall into three categories in this game. Tanks, damage, and healers. Tanks, such as Winston or Roadhog or D.Va, they're the big powerhouses. Damage characters, such as Bastion or Tracer or Widowmaker or most of them, really. They're the basic attacking characters. There are like twice as many damage characters as there are healers and tanks. Yeah, and then there are healers like Brigida and Mercy. They're pretty much what they sound like. When the fighting's going on strong, healers are pretty much mandatory. Otherwise, everyone just dies. And of course, Mercy is by far the best healer in the game because she has her staff that she will literally use to heal people. And in gameplay, when you've played for long enough, you have this meter on the bottom that will ultimately fill up your ultimate move, which is basically your final smash, you know, your big move that does something cool. Example, Bastion will go into tank mode, you know, and you just you just start shooting bombs at people. I really like Farah's ultimate. Farah is a damage hero. She gets some serious air. Her ultimate is ready. Make sure she's in the air. Justice rains from above. She'll just launch a barrage of missiles on the ground. It's an airstrike. It's awesome. I also really like Diva's. Diva is a character I play as from time to time. She was actually the first character I ever played as in this game. She's this girl who drives a big mech. Her ultimate is that she'll jump out of the mech and it'll self-destruct in the middle of all your opponents. If you do it right, that is. What you do is you have to charge it into your opponents and then hit the ult button. The mech will go charging right into your opponent's team. You're like, nerf this, and then it blows up. First few quick play rounds I ever played of this game when I got it for myself, I got play of the game with that all. And yeah, play of the game is when the round is done and whatever team wins, wins, you'll see the play of the game, which is, you know, the highlight of the game. The play that did the most damage. You see the play of the game, and then you see, you know, who did the most damage. You see the stats of the game. You get experience points, you know, that lead to level up. You get money so you can get new skins for your characters. You can see all of what you got in the hero gallery. The hero gallery is where you can look at all the characters and see all the skins you've got or can get. All their voice lines, their highlight intros, victory poses. I'm not gonna lie, I spend a good amount of time in the hero gallery when I play Overwatch. Cause I just like looking at all the characters and reading, you know, their little backstories, seeing all the different skins they could have. My main is Bastion, I have the Omnicrisis skin. Cause I think it looks really cool. And also my main voice line I have for him is he actually will whistle the Overwatch theme. <laughs> which is great. The music in Overwatch is fantastic. And it was actually written by several people, Derek Duke, Neil Cree. The main theme of Overwatch, which you hear in the main menu, it's great. It's a great fanfare, it's heroic, but it's not just the main theme that's great. Each map, you know, has its own musical theme, which uses instruments that are, you know, appropriate to the culture. Like if you're in Dorado, you'll hear like mariachi music. Serious props to that. I'm not gonna lie, I have the soundtrack. I listen to it quite often. So yeah, in the end, if I haven't sold you on Overwatch by this point, I'm just never going to. The gameplay is a lot of fun, but honestly, I don't even feel like you need to have the game in order to appreciate the world of Overwatch. You can just watch the videos on YouTube, but then you would be missing out on some seriously fun video gaming. I love the world of Overwatch. I love the characters, all of them, even the ones I haven't mentioned. Their personalities shine through. That's what draws you to them. No matter who you are or where you come from or how you like to play your video games, there's a character in Overwatch for you. Plus, this is one of those games that does seasonal events every year. You know, around Halloween or Christmas time, there'll be a big event that's a seasonal thing. New skins, new voice lines, things like that. Right now, there's a seasonal event going on. This is a Lunar New Year, Year of the Rat. And I got a new Bastion voice line. He goes, <laughs> you know, like there are fireworks going up. It's cute. And I'm looking forward to seeing what else I'll unlock. It's going on until February, so check it out if you want. So Overwatch, have you played it? Do you play it? Who's your main? And what are you looking forward to or hoping for in the sequel? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.